So in this presentation, we're going to have a look at Fernet tokens. So is it possible for Bob to send Alice some encrypted data and then for that to be timestamped and also for it to contain uh, all the information required for Alice to be able to decrypt it? One of the best choices is the Fernet method. With this, we get the best quality symmetric key encryption, such as AES 128 bit. We then get uh, an HMAC signature, which is signed for the, uh, the message. It uses CBC AES, which is an improvement on ECB, and it also uses the standard PKCS7 padding method. So overall, we get this format here. So the first eight bits of our token are th is the version number. Then we get a timestamp for when the, the data was encrypted, 64 bits. Next, we have an initialization vector or some salt that we've added in to the encryption process. And then, because we're using 128-bit uh, cipher, we get multiples of 128 bits. Uh, if the message doesn't fit into the 120 bits with the 16 characters, then uh, we must use the PKCS7 padding in here. Then at the end, we'll get some uh, verification of the, of the integrity of the message with an HMAC signature. So typically we use SHA-256 here and sign it with the password. Okay, so that's the basic format. So if you're interested, the PKCS7 method uses a way to identify, so we have 128 bits for our block size in AES. So we define the number of bytes that we are short with a number. So in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five. So we're 11 short of the 16 so we can see here 11 is a B, so we pad with 0B. If we add on one character here, it should take us to, to 0A. And then another character here. And so on. So if we get 16 characters, then we'll overflow our block and we'll go into the next block. Okay, so you can see here that it doubles in size there because we filled that one block with 16 characters and we now go into another block. In this case, we have 16. So we've just managed to fill it and this should give us uh, 15. Okay, so that's the standard uh, padding method that we use and it makes sure that when we decrypt uh, we can identify when a block isn't full, the last block. Okay, so that's that's the, the basic format that we have for our, uh, our token. So sample run that we get, or that we generate, we create a key and then we use a key, uh, a key distribution function such as PBKFS2 or SHA256 or something like that to be able to generate our key. The key is then used to uh, cipher our plain text. So in this case we have our key and then we have our cipher. So if we look at it, the first two bytes, the first byte that's two hex characters, is 6-7, that's the version number. Then we have a timestamp, so that is 8 bytes, and then it's there. That's it here. Then we have our IV, which is here, so that's 32, um, 32 hex characters. Then we have our cipher, which is in multiples of 128 bits. And then eventually, we, at last bit, we have our HMAC signature here. You can see here that we've managed to decrypt this. 
So here's some sample code. So in this case, we're using a fairly simple hashing method, uh, SHA-256, to be able to create the key. So we take our password and then we hash it into SHA-256 to create the hash method. We then get a base64 representation of the key back and we can actually go and use this key with Fernet to create the cipher suite. We then encrypt to create the token and we can convert the token into a format such as this in a hex format that we can uh, view and then we can uh, just identify each of the parts of the of the message so let's run this and see what we get we'll put in our own message okay so we'll try with hello world and the key of hello and we can see here there's the key that we've created from the SHA-256 there's the cipher and we've managed to decrypt it back again if we use a smaller message size we should see that the cipher here will get much smaller or be about half the size oops, I'll make it longer now and it should take a jump and there's the jump there okay so when we fill the block it goes on to another block and then we have our padding before we create the cipher a more typical way is to use a difficult uh, to crack hash such as pbkdfs2 so we will often take a number of iterations with this the more iterations the more difficult it will to crack typically that's about 10,000 and it might take up about a second to do each hash but it's well worth it because it will be difficult to, to crack so in this case our key derivation function is, is, is pbkt dfs2 and we'll use that to create our hmax then sure we'll do the same again and we'll generate our key so at this time we'll have a look to see what this gives us Okay, so we run it again, probably be a little bit slower this time, but now we have a key and a salt value to be able to create uh, our, our, our hashed key that we're going to use. There's a cipher, we can see that we get our message back again. So the code, if you're interested, is here, but it's fairly similar, but in this case we're changing the method from SHA-256 to BBKDFS2. So the good thing with uh, with with this is that we can create what's called a URL safe. So with this we can pass parameters with inside HTTP uh, get and also within the post. And the characters that we generate will not be uh, uh, removed or changed. So in this case we can create a token, which is this token here, and we can pass that back through our, our web infrastructure. When it's decrypted, we can see here there's the decoded information and we can get the actual information back again. So let's look at this one. So what we'll do is we'll encrypt to give us a token and then we'll decrypt it back. Okay, so let's see we have password123. So we're going to create our token and this is our token here then we can pass our key which is this key here and hopefully so we can pass that and then when we look to decrypt we take our token we take our key and hopefully we should be able to decrypt the message so in this case it was password so let's try it with some real with a real value here okay so we'll take these two values and see if we can decrypt ok 
Okay, so just copy that. Go there. And now we'll paste our key here. And in this case it's auto keying, so it should be able to, to f take the format that we have for our key. And we'll try to decrypt that. And there we go. So it's managed to get password one, two, three. Okay, so we pass the token and we pass the key, or we have the key already, and we can decrypt the token. Okay, so there's an example there with the token, and there's the key, and we can see that we can uh, decode or decrypt that. The other thing that we can do with Infernet is to be able to do a key rotation. So often what we do to be able to confuse uh, Eve is that we generate a whole lot of keys and then we rotate them on a regular basis. So we might create a hundred keys and then every day we'll use a different key. So Eve gets confused because she's trying to uh, find out what the key is. She might discover one, but the key is changing all the time. Could be for every message that we send, we create a different key. But we have pre-prepared keys on either side of our Bob and Alice. So there's been some key exchange where we've generated a whole lot of keys and Bob, Bob, Bob and Alice will have those keys. So Alice doesn't actually know which key Bob has used, so she must take all of her keys and try them against the token and then hopefully she'll get a result. But the last thing we want is to be able to create lots of exceptions and she has to go through them all. So we can simply do that with inside our uh, little Python program here. In this case we're creating three keys and then we add the keys into some sort of multi uh cipher suite. Then we can encrypt with uh, key two and we should be able to get the data back again. Okay, so, so we're going to be generating a number of keys and we'll take our hello world and we see we have three keys here that have been generated uh, Alice, when she receives it, will take the keys that she has and try it out. And we can see here one of them will work. In this case, it's actually the second key, which is the right one. But we could have hundreds or thousands of keys that we add in there. And we can then just uh, apply our decrypt method with the keys that we have and then to be able to uh, decrypt using the right key. Okay, so that's been an outline of Fernet tokens. They are really useful uh, method. We can pass our encrypted data from web browsers to web services into APIs and we can generally move things around and keep them uh, encrypted. Okay, thank you.